Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Addiction Watch Reviews. As you see, I have two watches from the Thomas Earnshaw brand that they sent in for review today. And we're going to take a look at both of them in this video just to show you a little bit of, you know, kind of both sides of what they have to offer in terms of their uh, watches. They have a lot of different watches and uh, these are just two of them. I do have some other reviews on the channel of the Thomas Earnshaw brand and I just want to share them with you. So let's start off with the automatic watch on the right. So this model is actually called the, Lon the Longitude Hemisphere Sun and Moon. And as you can see, there's a lot going on in this dial. Some pretty cool features on this watch right here. And uh, this one is in the rose gold ionic plated case, as you can see there. Um, it's a pretty good feeling watch uh, from first, first impressions, I must say. Let's get a little closer in here and get up, start off with some basic specifications on this exact model right here. We are looking at a case diameter size of 42 millimeters, so it's pretty normal. I know this is a dress watch, so it's pretty normal in terms of size. In terms of thickness, we are looking at 14 millimeters, as you can see there. Now, the ionic plating is in rose gold and is fully polished, as you can see here. All these sides, we have a nice little chamfered polished side here. But it is brushed on top of the 22 millimeter lugs there. And the other side as well is completely highly polished, minus the onion crown, which is brushed. So that's the finish in there. And the finishing is not too bad. Um, you know, this watch, I believe, is 420 pounds, uh, minus the code, which is WA30, I believe, which would save you 30%. So a third of that is what you're looking at on this timepiece. And Earnshaw typically engraved here on the side of the case. Here is your smooth uh, polished bezel, as you can see. We get a hardened mineral crystal, which is slightly domed, as you can see, because it does distort at certain angles there. Anyway, the cool part of this watch is the actual functions, as you can see. So let's get in a little closer here. You can see we have our main hands here, which are in a Breguet style. We have radial lines circling underneath this, which is underneath the applied markers for the hours. We have an open heart over here, which kind of resembles like a higher end tourbillon. But um, that just shows the balance wheel beating away. Over here we have a second time zone, which is pretty cool. So here's your main time zone on the two hands. Then we have your second time zone and a nice little Romans over here, as you can see. And then we have a sun and moon at the top for a day and night indicator, which it looks pretty cool. If you see that, there's the little moon over there, little stars. There's the sun. I think they did a really nice job on that subdial. Your Earnshaw logo is applied over here. And... Uh, the movement, it's an automatic movement, so here's your crown. It's, I believe this watch is only about 5 ATMs or 50 meters water resistant, so this is definitely not something to take underwater, but you can wash your hands and get it wet a little bit, it'll be okay. The crown, which is an onion-sized, medium-sized crown, is a pull and push, so definitely not a screw down crown there. Now we do get self-winding on this Japanese movement, and what I do like is you can actually see it through the front of the um, case here. So you can see it winding up there, which is pretty cool. I found that a pretty nice little feature that they did that. They cut out that little kind of triangular area there. So the watch obviously is running already. You can see the balance wheel going through here. Now I'm going to pull out the crown one position. This will change your regular time. As you can see right here, the indicator is moving with the hours. And then if we go the other way, you can see there, it is changing the time on the second time zone, as you can see right here, which is pretty cool. So I set 12 o'clock here, and then I can set my time here, only going forwards, or clockwise, I should say. I can set this to, say, let's set it to 1, say we're in a different time zone, and there we go. So I have 1 o'clock here and 12 o'clock there, and those will run... And that's the final position of the crown. So you push it back in, you have your two, two time zones set, which is pretty cool. I found that pretty neat on this watch. I've never seen them actually use this before. So that's quite interesting there. Now hopping over to the case back, we do get a glimpse of the movement with the Earnshaw logo, which is printed. You do see, we do get some striping on the movement with some blue screws, which are painted blue, I believe. They're not true blue. But um, I believe that's a mineral crystal as well. But the movement, yeah, it doesn't look that bad through the exhibition case back there. Case back is screwed down, stating the water resistance model number, all stainless steel. This is the 8087 model, the longitude hemisphere. So yeah, um, the strap, 
you get a brown kind of crocodile embossed strap here, uh, which is quite supple and comfortable. It is genuine leather. And the buckle is your typical E logo, or the E for Earnshaw, as you can see right there, which looks pretty cool. Uh, I really like their straps a lot. And the strap out of the box, very flexible, very comfortable. And yeah, let's uh, head over to the next model. Okay, here is the Investigator Chronograph. This is a quartz chronograph. So obviously the price is going to be a bit cheaper than something we just looked at, like the automatic with the double time zones and all that cool stuff. This model is roughly priced at around 270 pounds. Uh, you can convert that to US dollars if you want, or if you're in the UK, you can just keep the price. But um, yeah, so anyway, 30% off that with the code WA30 would save you a third of that price, taking off a lot of money and making it pretty affordable and accessible to the general public. Anyway, getting a little closer to this watch, as we can see, we have two sub-dials, a date window. We kind of have this two-tone dial, as you can see, with some nice uh, engravings over here. And then we have a matte finish dial, which is looks slightly actually brushed, I should say, uh, on the left side with Romans, which are applied going around the dial. Short style pushers here, which are flat, and an onion crown with wire lugs. Now, we are looking at an exact specification in terms of diameter, we are looking at 43 millimeters, uh, which is really not that big, especially for a chronograph. In terms of thickness, we are looking at, I believe this is 12.5 thick. We do get a domed mineral crystal. You can get a little glimpse of that right there. So I do like the wire styled lugs here. Now the case is all steel, 316L, uh, solid stainless steel, and it's basically completely polished all around in a very high mirror-like polish as you can see there. So this is a 20 millimeter strap here, tapers down to 18. It's like a very soft, I believe it's a leather strap on the back, I know that. But it's kind of like a very soft material. I'm not exactly sure what material they're using here, but it's very soft, it feels very nice on the hands. It's like a suede, but I'm not sure if it's true suede. Um, but it does have some contrast stitching. It's very flexible, very comfortable, straight out of the box. I do like the strap on this one. I've definitely never seen it before in any of their other models. Your typical Earnshaw buckle, uh, which is the same across the board in all their watches. So we're using a Japanese quartz chronograph inside of this watch, which is powering it. Uh, run on a battery. We get two sub-dials. So we get a continuous ticking seconds hand over here, Breguet styled hour and minutes hands. And the top sub-dial is your chronograph. The bottom is your 60 minute counter. So let me just reset it here. Okay, there we go. So we have your uh, counter over here for 60 minutes, and then we have your running 60 seconds up to a minute on the top one. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it. And a nice little feature on this is actually, you can actually count elapsed time, which I found out today. So you can see it's running now. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it with the bottom one. Then it's gonna pick up where it started, where it left off, I should say. You see it jumped a little more. I can stop and reset again. So yeah, quite little, uh, quite little nice feature there, I do, must say. Now the case back, let's take a look at the case back here. Still has the sticker on, keep in mind. Completely polished, 5 ATMs, water resistance, all polished, screwed down. A uh, very simple case back, nothing really to look at there. But yeah, nonetheless, a very affordable quartz chronograph. It's very stylish. I would say this is more of like a fashion accessory, something like that, while the automatic Sun and Moon is more of a true mechanical watch, something for more of an enthusiast. So you kind of have both sides here, you know, kind of enthusiast side and kind of fashion side over here, I would say. But uh, let me throw these watches on my 6.5 inch wrist so you can get a taste for what they look like. Here is the investigator on my 6.5 inch wrist. And those nice wire lugs kind of let the case kind of sit completely flat on the wrist, as you can see right there. I know I say as you can see a lot. It's kind of an addiction, <laughs> but there you go with a side profile. There's the buckle. As I stated, the strap is super comfortable. I do like this strap a lot. It's a nice gray, kind of dark gray color to match that dial right there. So yeah, definitely very comfortable. Looks good on the wrist. Now let's head over to the sun and moon. Here is the sun and moon hemisphere on my 6.5 inch wrist. This one, obviously, uh, out of the two, I'd have to pick this one. Uh, it is more expensive though, so do keep that in mind. A uh, very bold statement watch, I must say. A lot going on in the dial. Definitely looks a lot more expensive than it costs. I will say that. Uh, it does have some thickness to it, so it is quite, you know, chunky on the wrist. 
There's a little side profile with that nice brown strap there. There's the buckle of the Earnshaw logo. And yeah, nonetheless, a pretty cool watch from Earnshaw. Uh, yeah, definitely like this one a lot. So furthermore, guys, I think, you know, Thomas Earnshaw makes some pretty cool looking watches. Uh, I like this one with all the complications. This is more of a simple watch right here on the right, the Investigator. Well, this is a bit more, you know, someone for someone who's a bit more into watches, I should say. Anyway, guys, I think both of these are cool. Um, up and downs, you know, I think for the price, they're uh, they're okay. Maybe I would have preferred a sapphire crystal on uh, either of them. That would be the only probably little thing I would have to say negative about it. But that's pretty much it. Uh, they're pretty cool watches. The finishing is on point. Uh, the movement is quite cool on this one. I like the sh nice little striping on the Huang Zhao movement. It's a Japanese automatic movement. This is uh, typical Japanese quartz movement in this one. But anyway, guys, if you're interested in any of these watches, they did give me a discount code, which I believe is WA30 to save 30% on either of these watches or any watches from the Thomas Earnshaw line. I will drop a link down below in the description to their website so you can check them out. And also any sale items, they said you can use the code WA15 to save 15%. Hope you, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely check out my blog, watchaddictchannel.com, in the description below. And I hope to see you guys on the next video. Bye.